pausa rapidinho agora para falar de dica de ouro para os papais e mamães. Depois de experimentar a nova Hug Supreme Care Fralda Roupinha, tudo ficou ainda melhor para o meu filho. É a única com canais em X que se adaptam aos movimentos, com duas vezes proteção noturna e cintura elástica que se adapta ao corpinho do bebê, além de ser super fácil de colocar e tirar. Praticidade pura. Então guarda essa dica. Nova Hug Supreme Care Fralda Roupinha. Bebê, estamos juntos nessa, mais do que nunca. Agora curta seu podcast. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. What single women need to know today. Stop. TV's top matchmaker has the dating do's and don'ts. What's going on with all of this? First of all, when you're on a date, don't. She's here to help. I think people don't give me the chance. You need to be qualifying your buyer. Qualifying your buyer? Yes. Um, like in do... business. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Some say it's a hard life, but it's hard for us all. See these two women behind me? Now, it's easy to assume that men would be lining up to date them, right? Well, Caroline and Anna both say, wrong! They say they're victims of a double standard that is preventing them from finding love. They say that men their own age will not date them because they always go for much younger women, and they say they're just tired of it. Now, This isn't new. I'm betting you've seen this in your own life or that of a friend. So as you watch this show today, ask yourself, what in the world is going on? What would you do if you had to start over in the dating game in your 40s, 50s, or even 60s? Would you even know where to start looking for love again? How to compete with the young and beautiful? And how would you handle it if your ex-husband moved on to a younger woman while you were struggling to find a date with a man your own age. Okay, everybody have a seat. <laughs> All right? I want to know what the audience really thinks about this. Do you guys think there's a double standard? Yeah! yeah. I mean, so it's a double standard. W what's going on here? Okay, is there a double standard? Most definite. Why? What, what is the double standard? I mean, can, is it okay for men to date a younger woman but it's not okay for a woman to date a younger man. What's up with that? Because men want younger women. <laughs> well, they, do, but if, if you see a woman with a younger man, they think, it's her, they think it's his mom. True. What do you think? Does it bother you that there's a double standard? Do you yes. think there is? I think there definitely is. Okay, does it bother you? Yes. What? I want to be able to go out with younger men and not have people look at me and go, is that... <laughs> <a problem?" laughs> well, <laughs> so you... Th You say the young girls take eligible men away from you. Yes, definitely. What do you think? I agree. I disagree. We're not, well. <laughs> you disagree with what? There's too many women out there that date younger guys. I've done it. <laughs> Much more okay. stuff than They didn't look at right. funny. So, no, wait, 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 wait a minute. Okay, stand up. Yeah. So, do you mind saying how old you are? Uh, 65. 65? And how much younger was the young man? Like, always. In his uh, teens or what? Always 10. 10 what? years, 10, 11 years younger. Does that, does that bother you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what bothers you about it? They take away from us and... Um... So, are y'all all single? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, you're wearing a wedding ring. No, that's my, my son gave me Oh, well, it's ring. on your wedding finger. Right. Well, maybe that's, that's... why you can't find eligible. You <laughs> You're walking around saying, I'm married. You think I need to switch rings? Uh, lose the ring. Okay. Maybe it'll work. What okay, do you I'll try. Do you think there's a double standard? Um, I really don't. Are I'm... you married? No. Okay. 
Um, and I really don't, no, not any longer. I think that there used to be maybe even 10 or 15 years ago, but I think now there are so many older women, just like older women like she alluded to, that are dating younger men. And I don't think that people look at it quite the way that they used to. And I think now they see older women with younger men and they go, go girl, you know, it's a great thing. <laughs> well, yeah, it's because y'all band together. <laughs> no, no. All right, we got one for our team. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, Go I girl. mean, that's great. I mean, I think but, it's wonderful. You know, the problem with dating somebody a whole lot younger is the aging curves are different. Once you get to be like 50, you age a lot faster between 50 and 60 than you do between 20 and 30 or 30 and 40. So even though somebody might be, you know, basically can do the same things when they start, 10 years later, you're pushing them around <laughs> in, a, in a wheelchair, and that's not so much fun. All right. Well, all right, y'all can have a seat. Lose the wedding ring, it'll help, I promise. <laughs> all right, Caroline is a 58-year-old grandmother who has been married three times and is still looking for, in her words, Prince Charming. Now, she admits that she's been all over the world just trying to find him. From Victoria, British Columbia, to Monaco, to Amsterdam, back to Victoria, British Columbia, then to London, then to Australia, back to Victoria, then to Dallas, New York, Phoenix, and finally, Las Vegas. Now, she says it's harder for older women to find love because men her age want someone younger. There's a huge double standard for women and men. I signed up for an internet dating site. There was just no way I was going to put my age in there. So on my profile, I started at 48, then I went to 44, 35, 33, 29. I had 50-some-year-old guys that were looking for like a 36-year-old girl. All right, Caroline's daughter, Anara, says the problem is not her mother's age, but the fact that her mother just never acts her age. My daughter has always hated my lifestyle. When she was growing up, all the boys came around and they all hit on me all the time. There was a lot of situations as a teenager where we competed over men. When boys would come over, she would throw herself at them and I just have to let them decide, are you gonna go for my mom or are you gonna be interested in me? The youngest man I ever dated turned out to be 17. It was really embarrassing. People talked about me behind my back and about what my mom was doing. If a man dates a younger girl, he's a hero, he's a stud, he's, he's like worshiped. If a, a woman dates a younger man, she's a cougar. You've dated, how many guys would you guess? Oh, a couple thousand guys. A couple of thousand? I, I, I feel thousand like guys. that my mom, in my eyes, she's like up there with Madonna when it comes to dating men. Like okay. over my lifespan. Okay, yeah. so you say, let's, let's look at something wrong. Well. In 85 to 92, you flew from British Columbia. You were commuting to Monaco because you were dating Prince Albert. Yes. Okay, and you dated him for how long? Five years. Five years. Yes. Okay. It's a long um, way to go. Then, yeah, it's a long way to commute. Okay, then you, you started what we're seeing behind us here. Wow. Um, yeah, it looks great. I think she's gone every place almost. All of this running around. You went yeah. from Amsterdam. Yes. Um, from British Columbia to Amsterdam, yes. where you dated uh, 40, uh, a guy that was 18. Yes. And you were 44. Yes. Uh, then in 96, you were back in British Columbia and you dated James, who was 19. Yes. You were now 46. Yes. This was a friend of yours. It, it was an acquaintance of mine, yes. And okay. he, he moved in when I moved out and became, and in my eyes, she became like his, she was like her sugar mommy, and he was like a gigolo, it seemed, just wanting to feed off of her and have her buy everything and have the mother he never had, maybe. It was Okay, horrible. well, we're just seeing if it works. Then, <laughs> then back in British Columbia in, in 01 with Peter, then you start up again. In 07, you fly to London and you dated several Englishmen, yes. right? Okay, then uh, in March of this year, uh, you were in London, uh, back to BC, and you gave your number to a man that you said was just disgusting. You just gave him the number anyway. That's right. Uh, you said <laughs> he was fat and had you. bad He was breath. at the grocery store. He, oh, uh, no. he picked me up at the grocery store. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. I went to the grocery store. Okay, well, then There's later so this year, play. later this year, <laughs> you flew from British Columbia to Queensland, Australia, um, where someone had 
had uh, met you online. Yes, on the internet. Dr. Phil, that's not something she should be doing. That's dangerous. Okay, well, wait a minute. Okay, <laughs> and you, these people that you're going to see, they send you tickets, right? Yes. Um, so they're basically, do, I, they're, they're just basically summon, summoning you. Yeah, well, I don't know. say, just come, just come over here and see me. No, it's not like that. You didn't sleep with this guy, but you made out with him in the hotel That's right. that night. That's then right. the next morning he called you and dumped you. Yes. She told me that was because she didn't sleep with him. Yeah. He'd agreed that, that he was okay with that. And then she comes, she cries. She calls me middle of the night crying about it. She's, okay, you, you know. stayed there and dated 20 more guys. That's right. In Australia. Younger from age, guys. From she age 30, from age 30 one, and then they got to younger. Okay, 30 then, to 55. then you went back to British Columbia and you met someone online. Yes. And he proposed to you. Yes. Online. Yes. And you said, no, 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 no. Wait no, a I never I'm said no. First, I a, thought about it. I, I'm going to go see a guy no, in Dallas. First, I thought about it. You said, I'm going to go see a guy in Dallas. First. That's right. But he, he knew he was running But out. he had already, yes, okay. <laughs> but the guy in Dallas didn't work out. No. Yeah. He called you yeah. psycho. That's right. But she okay. started trying on wedding dresses. <laughs> okay, hold on. Yeah. So, she was so then you went back yes. and told Scott, well, okay. Yes. But you had never met him. Never met him. She talked to him on the phone. <clears throat> She'd reviewed his star signs and thought that they were meant to be together. But you know, you have to realize that all these guys are putting their best foot forward. I mean, it isn't like they're telling you you know, anything you don't want to hear, they're telling you everything you want to hear. And so, again, my question to you is, how do I know, I mean, you know, how do I know somebody's lying? How am I going to tell if anybody's lying? Well, you have to assume they are, because you do. Yeah. That's true. Well, only about one yeah. thing. Well. Only about one thing. Your age. That's it. You, you lied about your age. That's you said it. you were 38? No, 48. We got, we got to take a break. Uh, Caroline dragged her daughter around the world trying to find Prince Charming. So. When we come back, she's got two questions. How does she trust the information she gets? And uh, is she doing something wrong? We'll be right back. You agreed to marry a man you had never met. Doesn't that sound bizarre to you? Well, you know, is, is there is, is there nothing in, in your mind that's clicking that's saying I just agreed to marry somebody who proposed to me? Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. What secrets could your spouse be hiding? That was my big red flag. Why are you hiding it? What's she gonna see if she looks at it? I had kissed this woman, and that is what I told her. I just found out about that. Kissing some woman and chatting her up are two dramatically different things. Set your DVR, a show all couples must watch. I'm here for my marriage. We're going to take a totally unique approach to what we're doing today. All new Dr. Phil. That's Monday. Don't let your antenna TV become just a box. Upgrade it with this digital converter by February 2009, or it will not work. Call this number or visit this website. Don't let your TV become just a box. Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues, from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity. And you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. talking about the double standard that say that some say exists between middle-aged men and women when it comes to dating. Why do some middle-aged women struggle to find a mate after divorce when their ex-husband is playing the field with women half their age? It's just easier for men. I mean, based on results, we know that's true. 
That's one of the many questions that we're tackling today. Now, with Caroline, the sky is the limit when it comes to finding Mr. Wright, literally. She claims to have racked up over 200,000 miles flying to places like New York, uh, the Hamptons, Phoenix, Dallas, Australia, London, Monaco. She says she's not really being summoned. She just was thinking about moving, so this was a good place to look around. A good chance to look around. Now, Carolyn's daughter, Anara, says that her mother is insane for traveling all over the globe to meet men that she doesn't even know. My mother has gone looking for her true love everywhere except the North and South Poles. She dragged me to Europe. She dragged me all over other places in the States and to South America. I have dated several thousand guys. I dated Prince Albert of Monaco. I couldn't really get attached to anybody because I could never be certain how long they would be in our life for. Things I really love about internet dating is that it gives me exposure to men in all walks of life all over the world. I'm scared that if she were to continue traveling on her own and going to strange places and meeting strangers that she very easily could disappear. Okay, do, as you kind of hear it all, you, you've mm -hmm. traveled over 200,000 miles, you've gone to all of these places around the world, um, you've, you've dated a lot of men, you say 2,000. Um, we counted up the ones that were fairly significant. It was like 31. <laughs> um, 26 of them never got past the first date or the first meeting. You've been cheated on four times, dumped five, and scammed out of $290,000. Um, well, we talked to one of the guys that, that, that you had uh, an affiliation with, and here's what he said. He said, the first time I saw Carolyn online, she was 38. That's right, yeah. First time I saw her online, she was 38. Second time, she told me she was 60. Then when I saw her again, she said she was 48. And uh, I don't want to participate with these lies. I don't think she thinks they're lies. Uh, she's outgoing, but very flaky mm -hmm. with conversations about her age. She comes on really fast and easy. For example, here's my phone number, hurry up and call me back because I want to do something with you. And he says, actually, she's not that way at all. She's not easy, she's not that way, but that's how she comes across. And Can I jump in here? I, not yet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> said she's to. a very interesting and nice lady. Uh, I was turned off by her really fast. She's beautiful. But because of all the issues, I just don't want to have anything to do with her romantically. Oh, that is just so not true. He's not telling you the truth at all. That's not what's going on at all. You say, am I doing something wrong? Yeah. And I say the answer is absolutely yes. Caroline, you agreed to marry a man you had never met. Doesn't that sound bizarre to you? Well, you know... Is, is, there, is, is there nothing in, in your mind that's clicking <laughs> that's saying, I just agreed to marry somebody who proposed to me? But she tells me that they mean talked I had on to the do phone. It. She said they talked on no, the phone. No, no, come on. You, you came here asking a question. Yeah. Or do you really have a legitimate question, or are you just playing games? No, I mean, you know, again, you know, you're if it coming across if it as desperate. If it would have worked out, then there wouldn't have been a problem. But it didn't work out because oh, the okay. truth was. Okay, you're not. You're not being. I mean, look. If you're anybody's dog that'll hunt with you. I mean, it's just like, hey, you, you, if you're willing to marry me, I haven't even met you. I will show up and marry you. I'm buying a wedding dress. Uh -huh. I'm asking for a ring, and you've not even met them. Do you not think that's unhealthy? Do you not think that that's why you're yeah. having a problem that you're there coming across? No, 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 no please don't to... interrupt. Let me, let me ask her the question. <laughs> okay. You and I agree, so, I and agree. I appreciate Definitely your support. Definitely agree. But uh, um, are, do you really have a question, or are you just here playing games? No, I mean... Because, come on, you're smart enough to know that agreeing to marry somebody after eight days that you've never even met is ridiculous, isn't it? Yes, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm yes, not you saying, are. No, I'm not saying it's not ridiculous. I'm just saying it's not a reality. I mean, it's an internet date. She it's not a reality. You agreed to marry him, and yeah, you went there and asked him to buy you a ring, and he said no. No, and you said, well, then no, buy he me never a said no. He never said no, he wouldn't buy me a ring. He said he was getting me a ring made. So there's the difference. He didn't say he wasn't going to buy me a ring. He was getting a ring made. Okay. What do you... Ask me a question. Okay. Ask you a question. What do you, what do you want to know? Well, I wanted to know, how, how do you know if these guys are lying? How do, how do you know, you know... I mean, can't... You, when you talk to these people, 
don't you have to believe them? Don't you have to believe what they're telling you is the truth? Or you just have to always go with it, they're not telling the truth? I how, think how you have you to that? assume that they're just playing a game with you because you're coming across as desperate. You're lying to them about your age. So you, you'll, take a, you'll take an airline ticket and go see somebody. Yeah. So I, I think you have to assume. Look, anybody that would do that, anybody that would say, hey, I'll send you a ticket and you come here and I want to marry you and this, that. I mean, come on. What's your qualification for a guy? That he owns a computer? So she's got to play a little harder to get? She's being too easy? Is that it? No, qualifications? What's the qualifications? It, that he just, I mean, that's, apparently that's the, that's the price of admission, that's that he has to have said. a computer. Yeah. No. And they just put in their information and <clears throat> you went on that? No, it's, it's um, you know, it's more in-depth than that. I mean, it's hours and hours of conversation. It's actually showing credentials and, and business and, and uh, what you do and where you come from and family. But and hours and values. hours of you know. conversation is not exactly premarital foundation. Well, I want to know what you think the difference between me taking an airline ticket and going out to dinner with the same guy who would have the same issue. I mean, I don't see how you can make the airline ticket the issue. How can you possibly say that because I get on the plane and I go there that that's the issue? That's not the issue. Because I'm not through because that same guy, if I went out to dinner with him, he'd be acting the same way after two or three dates or maybe a year down the road. So I think it's really unfair of you to say that because I take the airline ticket and I jump ahead and go right ahead because I don't want to waste any time, I think it's unfair of you to say that it wouldn't still happen if I went to dinner and spent six months dating on dinner and then another six months doing whatever and, and then order to find out that this guy's a jerk. So because I've done that before. I've so spent you're years. Hurry. You're in a big hurry. Well, I'm not in a big hurry, but I just don't want to waste any time. So what's wrong with that? <laughs> what's wrong with that yeah. is it comes across as desperate. Well, I'm going to tell you, I may be coming across as desperate, but they're just a bunch of losers. And they would have been the same loser had I met them in the bar, had I met then them in a restaurant. Then why are you getting on an airplane and flying halfway around the world to see some loser? Because I like to travel, perhaps. <laughs> you know? Like, what's wrong with that? But you got to meet men somewhere else in a different way. You know, I've All never right, been we'll to we'll be right Dallas. back, and we're going to add to another lady to the conversation when we come back. Here's what I would suggest. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you my suggestion. Okay. Number one, you need to stop dating. And I'll tell you why. And later... Most men would like a 22-year-old bimbo versus a successful businesswoman. I am a powerful woman, and I do need a powerful man, because unfortunately, if you're not a powerful man, I will walk all over you. Pausa rapidinho agora para falar de dica de ouro para os papais e mamães. Depois de experimentar a nova Hug Supreme Care Fralda Roupinha, tudo ficou ainda melhor para o meu filho. É a única com canais em X que se adaptam aos movimentos, com duas vezes proteção noturna e cintura elástica que se adapta ao corpinho do bebê, além de ser super fácil de colocar e tirar. Praticidade pura. Então guarda essa dica. Nova Hug Supreme Care Fralda Roupinha. Bebê, estamos juntos nessa, mais do que nunca. Agora curta seu podcast. My mother did involve my children in her escapades by being at my house, on my computer, looking on the internet at men and telling my children that these men were going to be their new grandfather. My mother had the men from the internet dating site call my house and let my children speak to them. It got me really upset and I told her that I did not appreciate her having strangers call my house and talk to my children. Well, I'm here with Caroline and her daughter, Anara. We're talking about how it is difficult for women in their 30s, 40s, and 50s to compete for men their age because a lot of those men seem to want someone younger and, and you know, still with a great body and all of these things that men talk about. Now, you're, you're saying that I'm being unfair by saying that it is a wrong strategy for you to have somebody send you an airline ticket and go see them. Uh, your daughter's concerned. You've called her in the middle of the night crying, hearing people yelling in the background. Men you don't know, you just go to a strange town, to a strange place to meet those men, and you're saying, Dr. Phil, you're being unfair. You shouldn't pick on the ticket. I, I would find out the same stuff if they came to see me. So she's well, got to stop seeing them. He here's the question. How's it working for you? <laughs> it's never worked for me. Okay, then 
It doesn't work for me doing the, 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 the restaurant, doing the party, doing the bar, doing the work. None of it's ever worked. Then maybe you want to change something. Maybe you want to do something different, get in a different orbit in some way, get in a, a different pattern, go different places, meet different people, present yourself differently. Definitely present yourself differently. Yes. I've done all those things, so I, I don't see where, you, I mean, what else is left? Hello? What else is left? Hello? What are you? <laughs> Church, you know? Did you just say hello? Hello? <laughs> Well, no, I'm asking you, hello, what else is left? When you say get into a different venue, I've covered them all. There, when you tell me what's left. If, okay. the, if church, well, what's left? the gym, airline tickets, airports, travel, work. Okay, well, okay. first off. Friends, associates. All right, here's what I would suggest. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you my suggestion. Number one, you need to stop dating. Okay, and I'll tell you why. Because I think this is getting to the point of being really unhealthy and obsession, and I think you've got to really ask yourself what's going on with you that is telegraphing to even, I think, the most casual observer that you are terribly desperate and lacking some real insight into how you're coming across. You haven't met any of these men. How can you say that? If you had these men sitting here, you might take a different point of view. I might. I certainly yeah, might. But sure. I'll tell you what, I, I'm, I'm telling you that when somebody meets you on the internet and says, hey, come see me, uh -huh. and they send you a ticket, you are being summoned. And a woman who will do that, a woman who will go there and meet some guy at a hotel and make out with him that night only to be dumped the next morning is coming across as desperate. And men are turned off by desperate. So, men are, damn. so what are these guys? If, men are, what, what, I don't know. I don't tickets. know them. Are you I, saying they're not desperate? I, I don't care whether they're desperate or not. They're not here. I'm talking to you. Okay. If they were here, I would be telling them okay. the same thing. Your, your daughter's worried about your safety, and I think you should be. Oh, I, I think you should be worried yeah. about her safety. Yeah. I, you don't know who you're safe. going off to meet. Well, There's nothing unsafe about that. Well, instead of her okay. approaching them. Every all right, time. all right. I've, yeah, I've said enough. Yeah. All right. Next, we're going to talk to a 30 year old woman who's actively dating. Uh, says 30 is not even young anymore, even at 30. Uh, find out what age she says men her age want to date. We'll be right back. I am actually very afraid when I see women that are older in their 40s and 50s who are single that I might end up like that. You're always going to be competing against the younger girls, and that's always very tough, especially with all these men wanting all the young girls. Coming this November on Dr. Phil, a drug as potent as LSD, <laughs> but it is legal. And this school teacher actually smokes it. I think it's okay. With her own son. She lets me do it. No. He's failing school. Explain why in the name of God you would do that. The warning signs to look for before your teen tries it. Even in your straight A student. Plus, when does discipline become abuse? You made your daughter stand at attention for two hours and you have told your daughter, I will break you. That is correct. How to know if you're crossing the line. If you're so smart, why is it going so wrong? And groups that prey upon the weak and vulnerable. Could you become a victim of mind control? My body belonged to him. Didn't that click that this is not what I've been taught? This November. I've got news for you. Only on Dr. Phil. We're talking to women, some who say they are victims of the double dating standard. Uh, they say that it exists between middle-aged men versus middle-aged women. Now the guests today are asking some questions about this. What can I do different? How do I trust information? How do you really get in this game at this level? Now my next guest, Anna, says she's only 30 years old, but some men already think she's too old to date and are turned off by her independence. 
I'm 30 years old and I have everything in my life. I have great family, friends, a career, and I'm just missing love. I don't know how to find a guy. Most men would like a 22-year-old bimbo versus a successful businesswoman. I am a powerful woman and I do need a powerful man because unfortunately, if you're not a powerful man, I will walk all over you. I, I think men can be afraid of me. I am actually very afraid when I see women that are older in their 40s and 50s who are single that I might end up like that. You're always going to be competing against the younger girls and that's always very tough, especially with all these men wanting all the young girls. So I have a lot of pressure, I feel, internally at least. My biggest worry is of being alone. Okay, so you think that, first off, you do think there's a double standard. Yes. And you also think men are intimidated by you because you're successful. Absolutely. Okay, define success. You, you, you make your own way in this world. Yes, I have my own career. Um, I have everything in my life. I have great career, family, friends, and the one thing I'm missing is love. But my problem is people are intimidated by me because they think by looking at me that I'm self-absorbed or I'm some feminist, you know, and that's my problem. Are you? <laughs> no, I, I think I'm. I, I think people don't give me the chance. That's the thing. Yeah. Do you wear your success on your sleeve? I'm proud of like all my my accomplishments. Absolutely. Do but you, I try do you to talk be... about that when you meet a guy. I do. Okay. So is it possible that they kind of lean back from that? Well, actually, a lot of times it, the problem comes out about a month into the relationship. So at first they think it's great, you know, I'm independent, I have my own thing. And then about a month later they realize, okay, it's not so fun because of the industry I'm in, et cetera. And then they start getting their insecurities. I think you have to be who you genuinely are, but I think it's really important that you do let men know, I, I definitely, have needs, but they're just not in this area. And the challenge for a, an accomplished woman is to let a man know, I don't have everything I need. I do need you mm -hmm. in my life. I do want you in my life, just not any of the areas that typically define the male-female relationship in our society. All right, next, we're going to find out what a dating expert says about older men chasing younger women. And some of the women in the audience today just may not agree. We'll see when we come back. I believe that men do definitely find me intimidating. I'm a very successful businesswoman. Men are very intimidated by successful women because of their whole traditionally male characteristics, which are being a provider. So if you're a better provider than that man, he probably has a pr problem with it because he's intimidated. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. What secrets could your spouse be hiding? That was my big red flag. Set your DVR, a show all couples must watch. We're gonna take a totally unique approach to what we're doing today. That's Monday. Closed captioning provided by I think there's a bit of a stigma that, you know, oh, she's a cougar and all this other stuff, and which I don't particularly like that kind of a, a label. An older woman with a younger man is still not acceptable. She's just uh, dreaming about a youth that is gone, and she's trying to recapture it with the guy that is younger than she is. I think it's honorable for an older man to date a younger woman, whereas an older woman to date a younger man, it's a little seedier. I can't picture a younger guy liking such an older woman. I just can't. I feel like they always want that younger girl with the right body. Well, so the question is, why do men date women half their age and somehow it seems okay? I mean, we look at it and go, oh, isn't it nice? He brought his daughter to dinner tonight. Uh, and then they're kissing and we go, oh, that's not his daughter. <laughs> Uh, but somehow or another, it seems more acceptable. We're talking about whether there is a different dating standard for women. Now, I want to add someone to this conversation, uh, Patty Stanger, to this conversation because she's the CEO of Millionaire's Club and this exclusive dating service. Now, her book, Become Your Own Matchmaker, is set to release in January, and she also has her own 
It, this hugely popular reality show on Bravo TV, The Millionaire Matchmaker. She's currently taping the second season right now. What's going on with all of this? It's a double standard, but it can be workable because in Europe, it's common everyday practice. It's just the United States is a little bit behind the times. Yeah, but we're not in Europe. I mean... Well, you have Demi <laughs> and Ashton as your poster kids. So, I mean, it can be done. I do see it in my company once in a while. It depends. If there's like a 10-year difference, it's okay. When you get to 20 years, it's creepy. Okay, now you have... <laughs> you know, we've been talking with Caroline. We've been talking with Anna. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously very nice and uh, attractive ladies. Right. Um, are, are there, I mean, we, we talked to Caroline and I said, I think she's coming across as desperate. She says, I don't think so. I just would rather find out right away and get it over with. Um, it she should not be dating right now. 90 day detox for you. And you need to get into Dr. Phil's boot camp. Okay? Yeah. Thanks for the support, honey. You are textbook. Everybody who's dating on the internet right now is really upside down because they believe in the love illusion like in the movies. You need to be dating locally, taking it slow, qualifying your buyer. And you putting your daughter at risk is really insane. Crazy attracts crazy, by the way. Yeah. So, so you, you said qualifying your buyer? Yes. Um, like in business. Define buyer in this context. In this context, the person Quickly, that... Quickly, please. Okay, the, pers the person that is, uh, who, wants to, who wants to date you is really kind of like the buyer. You don't go out with the first business deal that comes along. You take your time, you field offers, you see if the person is who they say they are. Okay, you're not doing that. You're just... Everything the person says, you get mad at when everybody's leading with their negative foot here. She's letting the people call her daughter. I mean, what is she thinking here? You're acting like you're 24 years old. You know, Prince Albert is over, baby, okay? Move on to this generation. Because the truth of the matter is... You're living in a land of illusion right now. You think that it's like, you know, I call it the officer and a gentleman theory. People are gonna come into the factory, lift you up, and take you out. That's not reality. All right, now, Maureen is a middle-aged divorcee who's convinced that there is a dating double standard because she's been on the dating scene for 15 years and hasn't found a man her age who wants to commit. Now, her daughter, Haley, says she fears this double standard is affecting her mom's self-esteem, which I'm... It does affect you, it right? It does. It does. Definitely. Yeah. you got to, like, find common interest things. Whatever you feel you're interested in, whether it's golf or tennis, like in your case, I know you love tennis, um, you got to do things that float your boat, and then the guy's going to just show up. He'll probably start out as a friend, though. Okay, but that's what Anna was saying, is that L.A., it's different. It's and and it's, a, it's a tougher place to make a connection here. What industry are you in? That you're... I own a modeling agency. Ah, okay, well, that solves it right there. Um, <laughs> first of all, when you're on a date, okay, don't tell them what you do in the sense, I own my own business. You're leading with your uh, masculine foot. You want to lead with the feminine foot. Just say, I'm in the modeling industry. All right, coming up, a 45-year-old man who is dating a 28-year-old woman. We're going to hear what he has to say about all of this. Wait a minute. DrPhil.com, brought to you in part by... She's gonna be fine. We did find this. It's a $5 bill inside your dog. What should I do? I'd go to CeCe's. Got five bucks and change? You gotta go to CeCe's. Travel consideration provided by... Want to see something amazing? Here's a mildew remover that sticks. Comet Spray Gel. Unlike ordinary sprays, Comet Spray Gel sticks to mildew. Stick it to mildew. If you would like to purchase a tape or transcripts of your favorite Dr. Phil show, please log on to drphil.com or call 866-4-DR-PHIL. That's 866-437-7445. 866-437-7445. Okay, relax. Okay. I'm going to give you an invitation to Monday, okay? And show the body off. That's a little bit blousey for me. I like a tighter fit because you got a great body. If you have the boobs, flaunt them, okay? <laughs> if you've got the legs, show them off, okay? Well, today we're talking about dating double standards that exist in our society. Now, that was uh, Patty, and she's CEO of Millionaires Club and currently has a hit show on Bravo TV, 
the millionaire matchmaker. Now, what were you doing right there? Uh, we, the girls were coming in for a potential candidate to date, and I was screening them for the guy, and I was telling them what's going to work and what's not going to work. So you actually do some of the footwork. We do image consulting, date, date counseling, relationship counseling. We do it all. Full service operation. Okay, so a guy signs up mm -hmm. and says, I want to meet somebody, and so you screen these people. Right. Based on what he says he's looking for? Correct. You and do the same thing if a woman is looking for somebody? Yes, we do. We have millionaires on season two, by the way. Um, we do it for everybody because everybody needs a little information right now. Everybody's like hitting the wall. They're not dating right now. So you're somebody they trust that's going to screen them. H how do those women feel about you dressing them up to present them to some guy? 99% love it. The 1% that doesn't is still single. <laughs> All right. Comedian Shang Forbes is in the audience, and he's been in comedy, he's been, you've seen him on Comedy Central, HBO, BET, everywhere. Now, he often talks about men dating younger women in his routines, and is currently 45, and he's dating a 28-year-old woman. So you're doing exactly, Maureen, what, what, what we're talking about. Exactly. He's looking for somebody younger, right? Exactly. Well, no, I didn't, you know, I didn't go to the schoolyard and say, hey, I have candy. <laughs> but um, no, it just happened that she was younger. You know, I wasn't, I mean, I would date somebody my age, but they, they don't really, you know, come at me. So that's why the person I'm with now, she's younger. Um, I screened her, I met her on the internet. I screened her, I met her, sure, she sent me like a, a blood sample. I made sure, you know, <laughs> she didn't worship Satan or anything like that, so. Um, but for me, I feel like older women sometimes do come off as though, here's my resume. I didn't ask you that. Who are you? But here's what I do. This is what I've done. I didn't ask you that. Who are you? And I think that that's the problem with me sometimes is they come off immediately like, I want to show you who I am. I'm established. I have a life. I am already good. Well, then I'm gone. Take care. You know? <laughs> so. Okay. Um, yeah. But why? Why, why, would that, why would that turn you off? Like you said, it's like, okay, what do you need me for, okay? And you do have that, men do have that mentality of, okay, I want to have something to offer, but I think that I have a tendency, if you talk about money or you talk about what you do right off the bat, then that's more important than telling me who you are, and that turns me off. That's, that's just the way I am. Because I, I got to ask you, and I, and I don't know what kind of age gaps you guys deal with or if there are those that you counsel against, but I got to tell you, if... If I was in the dating world and dating some 20 something, yeah. what do we have in common? I, we, I we mean, had she to... wasn't alive when Kennedy was shot. I yeah. mean, she, uh, no. What do you talk about? Well, we, we, um, on Thursday nights, we have classes where I explain to her that MASH is not just potatoes. And um, <laughs> it's a good show. And, 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 you know, this is the Rolling Stones. And, you know, and so we, we exchange information. Okay, that's Little Wayne. Okay, I don't really get it, but okay. This is Pearl Jam, you know? So we go back and forth, and I like that interaction. And it does, it's not like I'm trying to relive my youth. I am already feel like I'm a youthful cat, so I don't feel that way. All right, we'll be right back. If you want to be in the Dr. Phil audience, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience or call 323-461-PHIL, 323-461-7445. We'll see you right here. You miss a lot of stuff on TV. Well, I want you to share your thoughts on today's stories because I know you have them. So online with other viewers at drphil.com is where you can do that. Now, I also want to say... Uh, there are no right or wrong ways to go about this dating. What you need to focus on is what's working or not working. If what you're doing is getting you what you want, then fine. If not, you need to do a different strategy. Maybe reorder. Reorder how you present yourself or when you say what you say about how you do it. Now, I mean, just think about that. If it's not working, you have to do something different. I want to thank all of my guests today, and uh, thank you so much, Patty, for being here. Thanks for having me. And... Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I, I think you and Anna should chat. We're going to have a conversation later. Thanks if, to you. If, if, you can't, if you can't get this girl hooked up, Aww. nobody can get hooked up. So <laughs> hopefully you can do that. Uh, Shank, thanks so much. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. So long.
you have to do something different. I want to thank all of my guests today, and uh, thank you so much, Patty, for being here. Thanks for having me. And um, I think uh, I, I think you and Anna should chat. We're gonna have a conversation later. Thanks if, to you. If if you can't if you can't get this girl hooked up, Aww. nobody can get hooked up. So hopefully you can do that. Uh, Shank, thanks so much. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. So long.